hello. <laughs> I'm Martina. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you, Martina. <laughs> nice to meet you, Anna Karin. So, what was your most interest about the topic? Well, first, uh, everything, uh, the whole project started with uh, actually an idea from my producer that um, there is this uh, school in Helsinki that we um, all know about in Finland, or most people know that we have this uh, good, very good school for conducting, but um, there's never, we don't know really what happens in there. <laughs> uh, so, so, so she asked if I want to explore this, uh, this question or this theme with her and um, and so that's where the research started. And, and, uh, and uh, I think um, in the beginning, we wanted to find out really uh, about the question of leadership. Like how, how is that something that you can learn at, in, in a school? So that's where it all started. So are you a musician by yourself or you do some music? No, not at all. I'm completely um, <laughs> like a hillbilly in the sense I have uh, no background in, in music and, uh, and especially not in classical music. So I, I, I really approach this subject like uh, someone traveling to a foreign country. Like <laughs> I would go to a world I know nothing about and I don't know the language. I mean, they speak English in this school, but they, it's the language of the terminology of music. So I, I, I'm completely in the, in, especially in the beginning of the process, completely illiterate, <laughs> and I try to use this as an asset that I, I have, I can ask all the stupid questions. <laughs> um, so how uh, did you first met James, Emilia, and Ihan? Uh, first, I met uh, with, um, I started doing research before uh, Emilia uh, and Ihan started studying. So, so I actually, the first time I met these two were uh, at the entrance exam when they were applying to start to study. And James started the year before. So in the beginning of the process, they were all very new in the school. And, and um, in the end, uh, we, we don't see the entrance exam in the film, but, but that, that there's already very, in that moment, I can very clearly see the, their dedication. So how, um, how you decided who comes in the film and who doesn't? So just a feeling or what was, what, where did you make the decision from? Yeah, that's a really good question because it's so relevant for this type of film. Like, who who do you s decide to follow for these uh, three years? And uh, there's not that many students in the class. They are like they. It's one or two are accepted every year, so it's like about ten people. So in the beginning, I was for a moment thinking, like, what if I follow all, all that, like all the 10 uh, students uh, and make it more of a film about the, the community and not so much about the individuals. Uh, but then I started to realize that, that actually by choosing wisely the main characters, I can portray sort of the process in a more deep way and I can um, sort of uh, these three are for me, they are representing all of them. So it's kind of like I try to find students, uh, young conductors who are as uh, different as possible from each other to see, to show a maximum of like how, how different um, sort of struggle, everyone has their own struggle and, and it can be so different. Like what are the the what is the journey that you are doing? It's mm. So you the filming took three years. How often have you been with them? How many days um, in between in these three years you were shooting? 
I was I was there almost every week, but I didn't have my film crew with me every time. So sometimes I just went by myself to sort of see and figure out what would be a good time to come with the crew next time. So I I I think we had something between 40 or 50 shooting days. Um, so I had to sort of during the period of three years. So I have to be very careful with the decision of when to go and film. Mm. Uh, so so that's why I, I, I spent quite a lot of time there in the in this music center uh, with them. And so. you, when you first came to the Sibelius Academy, Academy um, they were happy you were filming or was it hard to get in? It was actually, it felt like they had been waiting for a filmmaker <laughs> to turn up. Like, uh, like they, they were saying also that this is like a, funded with tax money. It's a public school uh, that they, it, it can't, it shouldn't be a secret what is going on really here. So, so they were also surprised that nobody had done a film before. <laughs> like uh, uh, I felt very, very much welcome. And then I, during the years we had, uh, and I think it was very good that some, every teacher could say when and if we are invited, because sometimes they wanted to have just the very personal discussions. And I, I totally respect this, that sometimes it's important to, to be there without the film crew. And, uh, and uh, I, I think that they were super open. It was like a few times that they felt like, okay, Maybe now you leave the room or maybe you don't come today, but today, the day after tomorrow or something like this. And I, 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 I think it was like a good thing that the teachers are kind of quite protective of their students, like that they, it's a delicate process. Yes, the, the critique was hard sometimes, really hard. And you, you hear what they were saying, was, oh, you really, was, was really, um, touching moments and the young directors have to hear that, the, the, not the young but, uh, conductors have to uh, hear that. So um, at the beginning of the film, Emilia doesn't seem to be so talented um, because of this critic moment. And in the end, I think she made the biggest step Or oh, I'm right or? Well, she is, uh, even in these Corona times, uh, she is already booming quite a lot. Like she really has uh, found her place as an artist, I would say. So in her case, the journey is very clear. Um, very, very interesting to see how someone can, in just a few years, uh, find sort of their inner voice as a musician so clearly so I'm very happy that that I I could be there with my crew to, to witness her process and I think uh, James and Ihan uh, are are doing such a big uh, process as well uh, and uh, and they they are super like uh, super um, how do you say um, in the position where they feel that, um, well, this is another, this is a bit of a political thing, actually, that uh, the question is also like, if for a young conductor that for your sort of home country, like, where do you have your debut? Like, it's, it's more difficult to them to have a big debut in Finland. It's interesting that in, in uh, uh, even in these days, that this uh, is a bit of a, yeah, it's, it's still like, it's, it's, it's surprisingly like uh, interesting that, that the Finnish uh, audience is more interested in young Finnish conductors mm -hmm. than for example, French conductors. And Chinese conductors. So that's yeah, uh, and because he he wants to stay. Uh, uh, oh, he he want, uh, Ihan wanted wants to stay in Finland. Oh. Yeah, and that, that's that's a very uh, big decision because if he would travel to um, Taiwan, his home country, or 
or even uh, mainland China, or uh, he would probably have more uh, more opportunities. But he actually fell in love with this country, so <laughs> that's something I I think is is really wonderful that he uh, he found his place like in the world <laughs> in another way, uh, and is also doing a lot of music, of course. Let's uh, talk a little bit about the uh, um, photo director photography. So you always had the same uh, director with you, I think, uh, for photography. So um, most of the time, yeah. Also, uh, well, you have to change uh, because three years are a long time. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was um, I have worked with um, this, the main photographer Mika Mattila in in uh, some previous films as well and. And uh, he, we did the film in China, uh, actually, uh, earlier together, another place where I was sort of lost in translation. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, and then, then, of course, with, during three years, Mika was doing a lot of other films. So, so I had the chance to work and to, to with a few sort of step ins as well. So what's your next project? Actually, I've just finished editing my next film. Uh, this one is about an, an um, industrial designer, a Finnish industrial designer who worked in Sweden. And um, he is very relevant today. He, he's not alive anymore. He died in 2015, so about five years ago. But he wrote a book about the future and he wrote it 40 years ago. And he's sort of um, uh, writing about these days in a sense, which is quite interesting. So, so um, this is another film about this is taking place in the world of of um, art, uh, but completely other angle. So, what is for you the main point in making documentary films? Well, for me, it's the way to explore things I know little about, I want to know more about. And, uh, and I love the fact that these processes are always taking many years. Mm -hmm. And it's a chance to sort of uh, challenge also my view of the world, like that there are so many angles and ways of understanding the past and the present <laughs> so so yeah that's that's why I, I i make documentaries and is it possible to live out of it if you oh um, well not easy uh <laughs> yeah it's uh, uh especially my way of doing films where I spend a lot of, a lot of time in the research. Um, you have to take a little bit of, uh, of economical risk yourself, but, but so far it's been okay. <laughs> somehow, somehow things work out. And do you feel as a female filmmaker um, equal um, treated in your country to the men directors? <laughs> Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I uh, I think I think for everybody in documentary film, it's quite a quite a struggle. Like that, uh, the men don't <laughs> make it any easier either. But I guess um, in the fiction film world, whenever there's more money around, <laughs> the inequality is bigger. But um, I don't know if it's a good thing that there's no money in documentaries, <laughs> because then <laughs> and nobody's doing it for, for money. <laughs> but in this case, it's, it's actually um, pretty equal, I would okay. say. Okay. Thank you very much uh, that you spent your time and uh, hopefully see you in person next year or with, new, with your new film here at the Lübeck Film Days. And I thank you very much for having the time and talk with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>